Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Put your hands together and ask your God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah, God is great and great to be praised.
say yes to you. Somebody clap your hands for you. We serve a mighty God. He is truly worthy of all the praise. He is truly worthy of all the honor. Oh, how we love you, Jesus, for what you have done for us and all that you have done, all that you're doing right now in this time, in this place. We say thank you, Jesus. We, we can't say thank you for yesterday. We can't say thank you for tomorrow. But right now, in this time, in this place, we can say thank you.
here to praise Him. We're here to worship Him. We are here to serve God. That's why we're here to serve God, to do a work for what He has for us to do. Ever since Adam, He told him to work in the garden. We have a work that God has for us to do. Each and every one of us. He has placed different gifts in each and every one of us. He has done different things in each and every one of us. The thing is, we have to submit unto Him and Him alone. We have to do what He wants for us to do. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. At this time, we say welcome to Fountain of Life Ministries, where the pastor is Elder Juan Hunter Sr. We, we did something different this morning. We did something different on this morning. But this was what was needed to let God just have his way. Sometimes we get stuck in doing structured things. Sometimes we just need to let God just have his way. Just let him flow. Not only in us, but around us in every situation that we're going through. For he is the only one who can do all things. He is the only one who can do all things. You always want to keep yourself in a position where you are submissive to God. God alone. He's the only one who deliver you. He's the only one who can save you. He's the only one who has a place where there's a heaven and a hell. He's the only one who can judge you and, and, and put you in a place. He's the one who can not only destroy the flesh, but he can destroy the soul. So you want to submit unto him and him alone. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Let's give the Lord a hand for you. 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 This place today. And so that's a statement that all of us have to make. Uh, or should make unto God that He is welcome um, in this place. So we thank God for uh, for being so good to us and we thank you for joining in with us on this uh, on this Sunday morning. And God is a word in which to give as He's given to me to give unto to the listeners and to the listeners and like I said on last Sunday not only the listeners but the doers for folk to be doers of God's word and not that, not listeners only we worship Christ alone we worship Oh. 
to leave sometime. It was to give God thanks for the word of God says enter into his courts with thanksgiving. Into his courts with thanksgiving. Look at God. Into his gates with thanksgiving. Into his courts with praise. So his gates is when you first enter. Look at God. You come first come in, there's gates, and, and so that at the introduction of how you got at the reception, I should say, uh, of you coming in, you you uh, you should come in with thanksgiving. You, you should come in and say, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you for waking me up this morning on this Sunday morning. Thank you for answering my prayers and being there, but you answered it by your will in the blessed name of Jesus. Ah, but enter into his courts with praise. Somebody say. Praise. Somebody say. Praise. 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 As you know, we, we have a format of doing things uh, here at town in the way in which we, in a protocol in which we uh, we do things. And I, I, I told the praise service leaders on, on last week, just let God use you. Just let God use you. Uh, it doesn't have to be how people, uh, what people traditionally hear, or or even what a person, the songs that they may know. But if you would notice, it's, it was uh, songs where all of us could have participated. Amen. All of us could have participated. And that's what I love about God, that he puts us in a place where a place of opportunity for us to give him glory and to give him honor. And we have to learn to take advantage of that. And even when the children see that mama and daddy and the saints of God can bless God right in the midst of and give God glory right in the midst of. And we have to learn to give God glory and give God honor and, and right in the midst of what God's doing in our life. And you ought to just do that always. The word of God says we should always bless God, give thanks to God, get an honor and glory unto God. I'm going to talk about something today. Stay where you are, Philip and Jordan. But, 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 but let me take my time in the word. But I want to talk about something to, today that is very familiar, a story regarding, uh, regarding Job. And, 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 and there's one that Job went through. And when Job went through, there's a word, and this is not where I'm going to take my text from, but there's a word. And that the word of God says all that Job, that he went through, you look at it in the first chapter of the book of Job, in the latter part of the book of Job. And it gives a description as to what Job had encountered. But in Job's encounter, the word of God says this in the 22nd verse on the first chapter. He says, in all this Job, sin not, nor charge God foolishly. And all of this, we, it's important for us to maintain uh, a lifestyle before God. In particular, a lifestyle of praise and a lifestyle of worship unto God. Regardless of what we are, are going through, God wants that it is not to deter us. What we're going through is not to deter us from, from giving God what he deserves and giving God what, what only he uh, should receive from us. Now, everyone's not going to do it, but you have that to make it, have it made up in your mind that nobody else does, I will. If nobody else gives him glory, gives him honor, deacon, I, I will. If no one else wants to give him praise and sing the songs of Zion, Sister Gwen, you got to say, I, I will. And we have to let folks see that our life, that it is in him in regards to what's happening in our life. We're going we gonna to do and give God to what, what he deserves. And that's, somebody says worship and his praise. Worship and praise. His worship and his praise. That he inhabits praise. The praises of his people. Uh, I, I want you to not to stand, but I want to give you a word that's in in the book of Job, because we're going to talk about that. And I'm 
I'm going to keep you on this day, but keep you very long. But in this book, I like that, Joy. This sounds good. Uh, in this 23rd chapter of, of the book of Job, the word, uh, the word speaks as, as follows in this 13th and 14th verse. The word that says, but, and, and I'll take my text from these verses. It says, but he uh, is in one mind. And who can turn him? He's talking, this is Job talking. And Job in his talking is, uh, he's talking about God. And he says, who can turn God? And what his soul desired, what, what it's saying God's soul desired, uh, even that he, uh, that he doeth. And, and it says 14, for he, he performed the thing that is appointed for me. And many such things are, are with him. And, and I want to look at that. I want you to pray with me in the blessed name of Jesus to speak a word to your people. Speak. Lord, speak. Wherever all the listeners may be, let it be a word that they hear from you that draws them close to save or, un or unsaved. But that will bring about change in their life. The blessed name of Jesus, use me how you see fit. Have your way in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Church, say amen. 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 One more time. One more time. One more time. Amen. Mm, look at someone says, all determined by God. All determined by God. All of us determined by God by God. Uh, I want to use that as a subject, if I may, and a uh, uh, subtopic I want to use. He's, uh, he's got to know you. So look at someone say, he's got to know you. 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 Many of you are very familiar with the story regarding Job. Now, I will not go into detail regarding Job, but uh, for many know that the degree of suffering that he uh, that he had and that he encountered, uh, a lot of times when you look at that suffering, and uh, for many people they they don't want to experience what Job had uh, had experienced. Uh, for the Word of God, it talks about Job being a righteous and a good and a righteous man. A man that was perfect before God in the life in which he lived. Uh, but we uh, we know that Job was one that God had used. And uh, when he had a conversation, uh, the Lord had a conversation with uh, with Satan. And it was Job, uh, Job's life that God had offered up in life in the terms of uh, not his life being that he would be, that he would take, life would be taken uh, but he, he offered up Job in such a way that, that Job could be tested. And, and what God had told uh, Satan, he said, you, you can test Job, but you cannot take a, his a natural life. Uh, but, but, but you can test Job. And, uh, and, and, and so we look at this, and we find in looking at this that because God had offered up Job, uh, and the experiences that Job was going to go through and the Satan was going to subject Job uh, to, we, we find that uh, one that is so difficult that many of us can look at and, and it's hard for us to even conceive the fact that God would, uh, would do this to any one of the people in which he loves. Uh, but one thing that you must know that uh, it's not about the experiences that you go through uh, when it comes to God because God knows that whatever he sends you through, that he has already orchestrated a way of escape uh, for you to be able to get through whatever tests that you're going through within your life. There's always a way, there's always a door uh, for you to go through and there's always a plan uh, for you to be successful, to be able to experience the things, everything that's transpiring within your life. 
But even to the point with Job that, that God said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? So the question is, when we look at this, we, 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 we have to ask ourselves, do, uh, could God say that about us? That, that, that this enemy that's going to and fro throughout the land, uh, do we live such a life that, uh, that God can say uh, to the enemy, uh, have you considered testing my child? Have you considered testing uh, my sons and my daughters? Uh, because God knows the life in which uh, that son and that daughter lives that is holy and regardless of the test, God knows that, uh, that you will not give up. God knows that you will not throw in the towel and, and that you will continue serving uh, God regardless of what's happening in your life. Well, Job was like this. That regardless of what was going to happen in Job's life, God knew that Job would serve him. But but there was uh, these there was a free, uh, we looked at this and, and and he said it was under conditions if you would that uh, you can test Job uh, Satan however you cannot take his life and so we look at the scripture and we find that Satan indeed did that that he tested Job and the word of God it, it tells us about the things that transpired in Job's life. And I did about some things after uh, when uh, the enemy started to, he set out to test uh, Job. The word of God said that it was and not necessarily in this order, but, but Job was a wealthy man. And the word of God said that Job started to, uh, to uh, lose uh, the things that he owned, his possessions. The word said that his sheep ended up uh, he lost his sheep. He he lost his camels. He he lost his oxen, and he 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 lost his asses, if you would. And and the word of God says not only did he lose at all of his cattle, but even the servants that that watched over the cattle that he owned. The word of God says that not only did he lose those possessions, but um, but he also uh, uh, lost. He uh, the word said that he had uh, seven sons and and three daughters. And, and here was a son that that came into Job and and told Job that not only if you would that I know you had bad news if I pray, pray but um, but the situation gets worse because uh, Job had seven uh, ten children, seven sons and, and three daughters but the word of God said that that his children that was in a desert that they were eating and, and enjoying the riches of life because their daddy uh, had well uh, and the word of God said that, uh, that a desert a storm came in or whirlwind if you would and and it, it, it killed all of his children. And when we look at this word, it, it's so devastating when you hear the story that, that Job lost all of that. But when you look at what Job, what his response was, and it's important about your response to, uh, to the situations of life uh, that's transpiring within your life, the things that's happening in your life, God looks at the response. Even the enemy looks at the response. The enemy, the word of God says, all this. And you look at it, and he said, Job responds, Sister Quill, and says, Naked, I came into this world, and, and he said, Naked, I leave. I mean, he said, That God that, 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 that I serve, I pray, pray. And he, he, he said, It's God that give it, and it is God that take it away. It's God that provides everything for us, so it really does not make a difference. But the matter got worse. Because the word of God said that the enemy did not stop there, but, uh, but he allowed boils to be all over Job's uh, body. And the boils were all over his body. But, uh, but when you look at even that day, we uh, in, the, in, the, in, in the Bible, the days 
of old when, uh, when one had oil on the body or even leprosy, if you would, then, and then they became an outcast. Uh, so much that, that he was, uh, the word of God describes him as being outside of the city because no other folk really wanted to be around him because of his condition. Now, now, now you got to look at the word to be able to understand that, but have you ever been in a position that nobody wanted to be around you because of your condition? And it was God that allowed things to happen uh, that put you in that condition. That nobody wanted to be around, but, but thanks God, the one that needed to be around was around God. And it was God himself. So it doesn't make a difference who, who shuns you. It doesn't make a difference uh, who don't want to be around you. But, uh, but what I said more important is that God is with you. Look at somebody and say, uh, everybody else can leave me and not want to be around me. But as long as God is with me. Everything is all right. The word of God said that uh, that Job that he had three friends, and and the word of God said uh, that one of them was Zophra, and and another one was Bildad, and and the third one was Eliphaz, and and the word said that he heard about Job's condition, and and I pray for you this day. They made the way to Job. And they come to the city only to find Job outside, outside the city in this bad condition. Uh, they looked at, at him and, and they were so sorrowful for him because the way in which he looked, the word of God says and that they sat around him for, uh, for seven days and, and seven nights and did not utter a word. They, they just sat there and looked at Job. Can you imagine that, that, um, that your friends come around you finding about your, uh, your situation being so dire, being so bad? That, and, but the word of God, it describes it and said that they went to comfort Job. But they go in, in, in Andrew and comfort and Job and sat there and just listened. But it's something about them sitting there and just listening uh, uh, because uh, we, we find that the, the things that they were thinking within the mind, uh, because the way that they responded to Job after seven days and seven nights of sitting there in silence looking at Job's condition. The word of God, it talks and it, it talks about how they responded to Job. I, I don't have time to go there, but, uh, but one of them, it takes us to uh, where we are in the, the 23rd uh, chapter. We, uh, uh, we look at it, if you would, in this 23rd chapter, the 22nd chapter, what it does is talk about Alphrens and, and what Alphrens said when he responded unto Job. One thing that Oliphaz, his friend, uh, said, he started to accuse Job of wrongdoing. And, and, and he accuses Job of wrongdoing, and then he turns around and tells Job what, what, Job, what, what Job needed to do was he needed to repent. And then I paraphrase it and looking at the 22nd chapter, but he tells Job, you need to repent. And get your life, I perfect it. Get your life right before God. God will forgive you. He's a merciful God and will forgive you. Uh, Job, you, you must know that and keep in your mind that Job had not done anything wrong. And in fact, the word of God, God said that Job to live a holy and a godly life. You have to be very careful of, of looking at people's lives and in the way that people live and you prejudge them or even judge them based on what you see. Because you really don't know what God is doing in people's lives. When you look at Arafras and look at, at Zopa and Bildad, they, uh, they looked at Job's life. Uh, but they, uh, they, they, they judge Job based on what they were looking at. Not judging God, uh, Job based on what God was doing. And you must know that we don't always know what God is doing in people's lives. Amen. We don't always know where God is taking folk and, and how God is delivering and how God is making a way and how God is growing and developing people. 
people. Uh, we don't know, and, and we have got to be careful uh, because if we're not careful, we're going to judge folk uh, and we're going to send some folk to hell. Uh, and we don't even have a hell to put anybody in, nor do we have a heaven to put anybody in. No, and we should not be judging folk like we do. Well, uh, uh, why should any man judge another man's servant? In fact, we don't have the ability in which to do that. Look at somebody say, because you really don't know where God's got folk. You don't know. You don't know where they are. You, you don't know what people are going through. And I, I'm going to try to move as quickly as I can. But uh, but we don't know where, where people are. We, uh, we don't know what God is doing in their life. We are. Uh, you got to know that God is the only judge. He's the only judge. There's no other judge but God. Uh, and here we find the friends, they, they come to comfort Job. But, uh, uh, but look at how they responded unto Job. Uh, and they accused Job of walking in sin and needed God to forgive him. Uh, I don't know about you, but uh, uh, with friends uh, like that, uh, uh, you don't need any enemies. Uh, uh, with friends uh, like that, uh, uh, you don't need uh, uh, anybody to come out to you. And, uh, hallelujah, who profess to be your enemy. Uh, uh, but you got some friends uh, uh, that will act like enemies. Uh, I believe that God uh, wants the people of God, uh, hallelujah, to act like God. Uh, how do you act like God? Uh, be merciful. Be kind, be, uh, be understanding, uh, be patient, be, uh, be long-suffering. When you see folks' situation, uh, learn how to pray for folk. And I'm tearing them down. If you would look at these three friends, well, uh, I, I got to move as fast as I can. Uh, when we look at the third, the 23rd verse, the uh, chapter, the word of God, uh, it talks about how Job, he's responding uh, to Eliphaz. Uh, in, his, in his response, uh, the word of God says, Job, in the first verse, then Job answers and says, uh, he talked to Eliphaz, uh, even today is my complaint bitter. He said, my stroke is heavier than my groaning. Uh, in other words, he said, uh, he, he read further, you find that, uh, that Job has gotten to this point in, in this story, uh, in the 23rd verse, that, that Job is uh, somewhat upset. Uh, he's upset with the fact of, of what he is going through, uh, but he did not. Uh, uh, he did not think anything in a way that, uh, uh, hallelujah, that dishonored God in any kind of way. Uh, uh, but he was upset with God. Uh, and one might say to himself, uh, uh, if can folk truly be upset with God? Yes, they can. Uh, and you are witness that folk can be upset with God. Uh, you don't always know what God is doing in your life. Uh, and there are some things that you go through uh, uh, that you don't always understand what God is doing. Uh, uh, and some folk get upset. Uh, uh, some folk are more careful uh, not to get upset with God. But, but there are two little folk that get upset with God. Uh, it's a folk that lead and they'll lose their loved ones and, uh, and they'll get upset with God. And it's folk that lose their job and, uh, and they'll get upset with God. Uh, it's folk that things will go south. Uh, upset with God. They don't understand why things are happening in their life. And some of them, they don't understand the dialogue that, that even God has with the enemy. And knowing that you're going to come through, but in the process of it, they'll get upset with God. There's some people today, right now, that are upset with God because of things that are happening in their life. You get upset with God, but hallelujah, but don't, don't charge God foolishly. Uh, don't let the words come out of your mouth. Uh, hallelujah. Charge God foolishly. Uh, yes, he was upset. Uh, and let me tell you, this James talks about it, if you would. Uh, uh, that you could be upset, you could be angry, but the word of God says, sit not. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, Job, he was upset, but he did what? Uh, uh, but he did not sin, if you would. Uh, hallelujah. 
so you can get upset, but don't sin. Look at the neighbor and say, get upset, uh, but don't sin. And Job, he speaks, uh, and he speaks here, and he says, uh, uh, he is upset. Uh, he said, oh, then I knew where I might have. Uh, uh, my friend, you know, in other words, uh, uh, Job, he, uh, he was in a situation where, where he was now longing. Uh, uh, he was longing for God. Uh, have you ever been in a place of uh, uh, dire straits where, uh, where you could not do nothing else but long for God? Uh, have you ever been in a place where, uh, where you could not, uh, where life uh, was so difficult and, uh, and stressful and, uh, and became so tiring where, uh, where you couldn't do nothing but long for God? Uh, you knew that the only way uh, of deliverance for you, it was not man, uh, uh, but it was only God. Uh, so in this situation, uh, the word of God said that uh, that Job that he uh, that he started seeking God, uh, and the word of God it talks about uh, and describes uh, as he uh, as he started to long uh, for God. Uh, he also said that uh, the word said I, I would honor my, my cause before Him uh, and, and fill my mouth uh, uh, with arguments. He said I, I would know the words which I. Uh, he would answer me and, and understand that he uh, and understand what uh, what he would say unto me. Uh, uh, he said, "Will he plead against me with uh, uh, with his great power?" He said, "No, he won't." Uh, uh, he said, "But he uh, would uh, would put strength in me." Uh, in other words, he said, "When uh, uh, my longing and uh, how to be my seeking for God?" Uh, he said, "God will he uh, uh, God will uh, he will strengthen me." Uh, and I'm gonna trust in uh, and I seek it for God that, uh, that God gonna uh, that God gonna help me if you would. Uh, and when you look and find what Job is saying uh, in his search uh, for God, he said uh, in the eighth verse, he said, Behold, I, I, I go forward, I, I'm gonna give life to where I'm going, but uh, if you just pray with me for a moment, uh, the word God says in the eighth uh, in the eighth verse, uh, he said, Behold, a Job speaks. Uh, he said, I go forward. Forward, but uh, uh, but he is not there. He said, uh, and backwards, but uh, he said, but I cannot receive him. Uh, in nine verses, and on the left hand of where uh, he do the work. Uh, he said, but I cannot behold him. Uh, he said, I cannot uh, behold God. He said, uh, God hide himself uh, uh, on the right hand, and that uh, I cannot see God. Uh, in other words, he said, as I see God, uh, and I'm longing for God. He said, God hide it. Uh, uh, he hide a shop. Uh, he said, God, he, uh, I cannot see God. Uh, have you ever been in that place? Uh, hallelujah, pray uh, where you saw God out. Uh, hallelujah, but God positioned himself uh, where you could not see him. Uh, he positioned himself where you could not feel God. Uh, hallelujah, where you find him. Uh, and you're praying unto God. Uh, and it seemed like your prayer uh, only went up to the ceiling. Uh, and came and sometimes it seemed like it was just an echo. And you said, Lord, and it echoed back. And sometimes you prayed, and it seemed like you didn't feel a thing. And folks said, what do you mean? It's not about feeling. No, it's not about feeling. But you can pray so much sometimes. And you can be in such relationship with God. That you can feel that, that God, that he answered. That he heard, he heard your cry. Relationship, hallelujah, and an anointing will come upon your life when you start to pray unto God. Have you ever prayed and an anointing came upon you? Hallelujah, have. Just put your hand together. Hallelujah, it comes to be a relationship. But he said, I pray, and God had hidden himself. He said, I did not, I could not, I couldn't even see God. Uh, if you would, uh, uh, but one thing we know uh, uh, about God that uh, that Job he truly knew uh, uh, he knew God uh, he knew some things about God that God uh, and that God that he answered uh, and that God would answer his prayer. I uh, look at the timber uh, and the word of God said, but he uh, I gotta bring him to a close. Uh, but the word of God said, but he uh, he uh, 
Uh, he said, you know what I'm saying? But, but, but God, he, uh, uh, he knew in my way that uh, he knew the way I came. Uh, in other words, he said that uh, uh, God knew it, the direction uh, in which I'm going in. Uh, uh, God knew all uh, that's happening uh, uh, within my life. Uh, and what Job said, uh, and Job goes on to say that uh, uh, that is God. And God don't find himself. Uh, he said, when God had tried me, uh, uh, She'll come forth uh, and go to the ones and don't know uh, and the life in which I live. Uh, uh, he said, Go on and after God, uh, look at what Joel is saying. And, uh, and you got to feel the same way. Uh, and what God is doing within your life, uh, uh, Joel is saying, uh, uh, God knows what I'm going through. Uh, he knows what I'm up against. Uh, uh, but he said, All of this that, uh, that I am doing. Uh, all of this that I'm going through, he said, when I come out of this, hallelujah, I'm coming out, I'm coming out of the very God, the Jehovah understood the fact that the world a way out, and that the world a way of escape, and that God was going to make that way, hallelujah, he trusted God enough to know that his situation would not always be there, hallelujah, in God, hallelujah, because he, he put his trust, hallelujah, in God, and not in anything else, it was not in his friends, because it was friends that judged him, it was his friends that, that accused him falsely, if you would, it was his friends, hallelujah, that said because you're living on God, that punishment is coming your way, about punishment. Hallelujah. It was about purpose. In God's own life. You got to know that when you go through that all that you go through I got to go. So go with me if you will. I don't know who's going through right now in the life. But all that you're going through you sometimes feel that God that he's punishing you. And you're saying you know why? Look at my life. You're going to see more than you've seen before. 
God says here, Job says, he says in 13, he says, but he is in one mind, talking about God. <clears throat> he says, who can turn him? And what his soul desired, even that he doeth. For he performeth the thing that is appointed for me, and, and many such things are, are with him. In other words, what he's saying here that uh, he said it is God who determines all things. He said, whatever happening in my life, it's God doing it. He said, whatever God wants, Sister Quita, he gets it. Whatever God desires, God gets it. Whatever. Whatever God, uh, whatever his counsel, his will is, God carries it out. He performs it and brings it back to himself. You've got to know that it is God who determines all things. Job's looking at his life. He said, Job, he said God determines all, determines all of this. He said, what difference does it make about what I want or even don't want or what I desire? God, it is God who determines it all. Listen, listen. Wherever you are, what are you going through? Is God doing it in your life now? I don't care how difficult it is. I don't care how hard it is. I don't care what you are, what you are up against. It is God who has determined it. And you've got to live godly. You've got to live holy before God. God's got to know you. He knew Job. Based on him knowing Job, he presented Job to his adversary. Can God present you to the adversary? Does God know you enough to know that all the life that you're living in spite of what's happening in your life, that you will not accuse God falsely, that the words that come out of your mouth, it wouldn't be words to talk against God, but it would be words to, add, to edify God and who God is and what God is doing in your life. And will you trust God enough to know that God's going to bring you through can you imagine Job speaking and had lost everything? He lost everything but his wife. And even his wife turned against him. Who uttered the words, you are a cursed God and die. But listen to Job's response, who said, you talk like a foolish woman. You must know that it's God that's doing this thing in your life. Everything that's happening in your life, God's got it. He's doing it. It's what God wants to do. And you know what? You can't do nothing about it. But use what you're going through right now to be a testimony that God will bring you through. Use what you're going through right now to be a testimony that God's going to deliver, that God's going to make a way. And let the words come out of your mouth right now to say, God will, God can, God is able. I'm coming out. God can do it in my life. Don't wait till it's over for God to deliver you, for you to be able to say that God can do it. Why don't you say it now? I know he can. I know he can. And regardless of what he's taken away from me and whatever I'm going through, whatever I'm experiencing, it does not make a difference. I will serve God and it's for God I'll live and for God I'll die. Job even said the word, no, he slayed me yet well. I'm going to trust him. I'm going to trust him. I'm going to trust him whether he bores or on my body. And now I'm going to trust him. All my children are gone. I'm going to trust him. All my cattle, all my riches, my job is gone. But I will you trust God and the job is gone. And the job is gone. Will you trust God? And you no longer have your house. You no longer have your car to drive around in that is so fancy. You no longer have your health and your strength. You no longer have the ability to do the thing. We you trust God. And that's what God, Job says, God is, is he, is he, is he. He determines all of this. 
to look at somebody and say, trust God, trust God, trust God, trust God, trust God. Trust God. I don't know you are at home, but, but I'm telling you to trust God. I, I don't know what you're going through at home, but I, I know some of you have lost loved ones, but I, I'm telling you, but still trust God through this, even through this COVID-19, through, uh, through this disease and through the sickness, still trust God. You got to know God. You got to know God. And there's some folk that don't know God. You're going to be all right if you know God. You're going to be all right if you know God. Because if you know God, then God knows you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because God knows you. And because you know God, that means you, you're living a godly life. You know what God wants you. And, and, and you long to please him. You know what the pastor of the, uh, you know the pastor of your life. Uh, uh, the bishop of your life, uh, the shepherd of your life, uh, the head of your life, the master of your life. Uh, and your only desire is to please God. Uh, uh, because you know God and you know what God wants. Uh, uh, he wants you to live a life circumspectly before him. A life that is godly. A life that is righteous. And, and Joseph, uh, God, 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 God. Knows me, God knows me, God knows me. He knows who is His, and, and if you're here, you ought to just uh, just raise your hand and say, "I'm God, I'm God. God knows what I am. God, God knows what I'm going through. Uh, God knows what I'm up against. Come on, uh, open up your mouth. I don't know what you're going through, but God knows. Uh, in the name of Jesus, just lift up your hand. Work right where you are right now. Uh, in other words, right where you're experiencing." Right with her, right in the midst of the trouble, right, right in the midst of the trial, right in the midst of the opposition, right in the midst of the pain. You, you ought to say, God knows me. God knows me. God, I know God knows my, my coming. He, he knows my going. He, he knows my, uh, my rising up and uh, my down setting. He, he knows what's happening all in my life. Uh, it's God. It's God. It's, it's God who is determined. It's that going to be a testimony that I can tell for uh, that God will and, and God can. He'll deliver. He, he'll make a way. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I don't know why in the name of Jesus. Didn't know it. Didn't, didn't figure it out. But God did it. In the name of Jesus. God church. God made it. God Of course, the 
mark of what God says. It is God who determines all of it. It's all of it. All of it. God determines it. Where you are now, it's God. Yeah. And he wants to help you. He wants to help you. Job didn't do a thing wrong that Job was going through. Uh-huh. It's some of you that, that haven't done a thing wrong, but you're going through. God says, I'll help you. Yeah. I'll help you. Job even said, he said, when I, he prayed, and he said, God will strengthen me. God will strengthen me. God will strengthen me. You need some strength right now. And I want to pray for you, Bill. Will you be able to close down with that camera? But I want to pray for you because you need some strength right now. And, and this is different because we always ask folks to come. Uh, only if they, the, if they need to be saved or this goes on for the most part, we ask that. But but I'm asking you to come because you haven't done a thing, but, but you're going through. You haven't done a thing, but you're going through. Uh, you're going through. And God said, I, uh, I'm going to strengthen you. I'm going to strengthen you. And all I want to do, I want to pray for you. I'm going to say, I'm going to say one word of you. I'm going to anoint you. And I'm going to say strength. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, strength. In the name of Jesus. And those in your home, uh, right now, in the name of Jesus, strength. You have a third thing, but you're going through strength right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to come with you.